First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring a starter node into the world, and then we'll bring a blank node next to it. Then we will click and drag from the starter node to the blank node. And what this will do is make a link in that direction. This link by default is going to be instant. And you can see this indicated by the fact that it has no notches on it with any type of timing indicators. When I hit space, you can see that this will pulse every four beats. And when it pulses, it'll activate whatever it's connected to. So if we click on this node here, we will start off in mode one. Every node has its own set of modes. Down here, you'll see them listed out and you can switch between them by hitting one and two on the keyboard just to cycle through them or you can click them manually. Note right now, if you do them manually, they don't automatically bring up their left palette. It's a bug at the moment, which will be fixed. You can see if I click the starter node, it only has one mode and the sampler node has four modes. And we'll start with going to mode number two. Here we have the sampler selection at the left and you can scroll up and down to kind of quickly go through them. And we'll just click and drag the second piano, which is a short version of the piano in to start with. And you'll see because I'm in play mode, every four beats, it'll play this piano sound. I'll go ahead and hit spacebar to stop. And then we'll click on this to edit it a little bit further. In order to preview without being in play mode, you can right click on the node and that will play the sound that's associated with it. In order to change the note that is on a sampler node, you can hover over the note itself and then scroll up and down. I'm similar with the octave as well. So to move forward, I'll, I'll change this to a C and we can actually click on it as well and just click and drag a C over by hand. And then I'll alt drag the node to copy it and I'll alt drag again and then this middle one I'll change to an E and I'll change this other one to a high C and then you'll see when I hit space now it'll play a chord what we can do from here is edit the timing of the links that it's attached to every square that you see on the elements that you can click and drag in place over to the timing slot indicates a quarter beat so four quarter beats is one beat and eight quarter beats is two beats. And this starter node will pulse and activate any associated connections every four beats. So that's kind of a way to, to gauge the timing. For the most part, it's good to just play around with like two and four and see where you can go from there uh, before you get a little bit more advanced with how, how to time things. But for the most part, we're just gonna add two quarter beats to both of these links. And you'll see now when I hit space, there's a nice little doom, doom, doom type thing happening. From here, we can go back to mode one. We can click this power button to turn off a node. And you'll see when I hit play, it'll block any connections that the node's attached to. And then if I turn that back off, I'll hit mute instead. And this will turn off the sound of that node, but allow activations to go through. If you have a MIDI keyboard, you can go to settings, go to options and go to audio and you'll see there's this allow MIDI input checkbox. You can check it on and set it to the MIDI device that you want to be your MIDI input. Go back. And then when you have MIDI input, if you click on any node, you can play on your keyboard on any selected nodes. This is useful for making quick chords. So if you want to quickly lay out a chord uh, using your keyboard, you can click all three nodes, hold down shift to select them in order, and then go from order of the chord that you wanna do, click these record buttons, and then on your keyboard, play the notes in order. And you'll see that the, no the button kinda changes. It's supposed to turn off, but that's a bug at the moment. You can click off and then hit play again. And you'll see that the nodes will now be whatever notes you play. In the future, I'm going to be working on this note editing palette here and trying to find a quicker way for those who don't have a MIDI keyboard to intuitively adjust the note and then also have different things like keys and all that stuff. One final thing to note is that when you're hovering over any node, you can trigger activation of the node as if it was a starter node. 
from anything that's hovered. So what I mean by that if, is if you hit T, you'll see it'll trigger the activation of this node that I was hovering over. And that's just a quick way to kind of test connections without starter nodes playing. So for instance, if I were to double click from here and do a copy and then hit T on this, you'll see it'll play the chain without having a starter node connected. I'll double click this and then I'll delete. And from here, we'll move on to modulation and adding effects elements, uh, that type of thing to the samplers. And I'll double click these to delete them. And now we'll go to mode three. Mode three is probably the most sophisticated mode of the entire game. We have the ability to adjust how a sound plays in many different ways. So all this stuff you can hover over and it'll give you an idea of what it is. Some of things are kind of placeholder like LFO is going to change to something in the future, so don't go too nutty with it yet. Um, but we can do simple things like volume and pitch is a good example of how to edit these. So if I click and drag them over, you can see it'll now apply a volume adjustment and a pitch adjustment, which by default is going to be the same. However, when I hover over the element that I want to change, I can middle mouse scroll up and down, and you'll see the little... Uh, slider on the inside that the bar fills up or goes down and if it while you're doing it, you can kind of see what the value changes to so if you hover over and then now play while you're doing it you can see it'll affect the node on the fly uh, tone that back things like filtering that type of thing, and many other different effects can be applied to the nodes. I would say that probably the most basic stuff would be volume, pitch, and filtering, or also duration is a good one too, to, because duration changes how long the note lasts for. So if you go down to like very, very short duration like this, you'll see the note doesn't last as long. So that's really important to know for editing the timing of a a playing sampler as well. The last mode we'll talk about is mode four. This is easier to talk about with drum samples, but we'll just, for the most part, you can turn any node into a patterned node, kind of like a circular pattern. So you can drag just to select how many you want in the pattern. For the most part, you can just full drag it and this will give you 16 elements. When you hit play, you'll see that this little ring will go around in a circle. Right now, nothing happens. And that's because I don't have any of these sections turned on. So I can click and you'll see that these will turn on the different parts. So I'm going to go back to modulation and I'm going to change the timing back down to something really tiny, just so it's less annoying. Cool. And then from here, I can adjust. You'll see that it comes with two dials on every single wing. So these dials, if you hover over them, these will probably have images in the future, but right now, if you hover over them, you can adjust the volume or the pitch. So this will allow you to do interesting things like and now when I hit play, And typically what I like to do is I'd like to take these ring patterns and I'll go to mode three and then I'll throw a delay on top of this and then it'll do a... You'll see it'll reflect the actual delay across the entire pattern as well. It's really fun to watch. So like I was saying, this is probably best illustrated with the drum patterns instead of normal samples. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll delete this and I'll just grab a the basic default drum kick node and I'll hook this in and you'll see this gives me a simple 808 drum kick to work with and then from here I'll make it shorter cool and then uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll duplicate it you'll see it'll double up at first but what I'm trying to do is if I go over here I can grab indicated by this little notch you can see that the uh, the pattern starts here. And then if I 
uncheck these two, this will give me like a, a starting pattern for a snare. And I'll go back to the note panel because I, this is important to know for drum patterns. If I select the drum pattern that I want, which there's plenty to choose from, they'll have different icons and stuff in the future, but you can see what they kind of are by hovering over. You can scroll through the different notes to find something that you want. So right now I'll just do something like this. And you'll see, just like that, you can get some sort of drum pattern going rather quickly. And that right there is probably all of the things that you need to know about sampler nodes.